All right, aloha kako, warm greetings everyone. Uh, my name is Pua Ala Pasqua, previously with the Center for Biodiversity and Conservation of the American Museum of Natural History, and currently with the Hawaii Conservation Alliance Foundation. Let's see if this will advance for me. Um, and I'm really grateful to the Near Science Collaborative for the funding support to move forward with, with this project entitled Cultural Ecosystem Services in Estuary Stewardship and Management, and also very grateful to the Heia and Ketchmuk Bay National Estuary and Research Reserves for their key role in this project. Um, before I start, so that you don't have to only see my face in this presentation, um, I'd like to give a very warm shout out to the full project team involved in this work, and that includes reserve staff and managers from both Heia and Ketchmuk Bay, together with um, representatives from the Center for Biodiversity and Conservation. I don't think I need to remind folks on this call about what ecosystem services are or why they're important, but I will remind you that within ecosystem service assessments, there is this section here, cultural ecosystem services, that are sometimes overlooked, and there are a variety of both conceptual and practical reasons behind that, um, which this project aims to address. I'll throw in a few different definitions here just for ease of reference later, but the most common definition you may have heard is that cultural ecosystem services are the non-material benefits that result from paired human and environmental interactions. Others have dived into that definition a bit more to think about how those benefits are specifically derived by people who use a particular um, area or share an attachment to that area by groups who share a particular worldview or ideology and other um, groups that define their well being through a particular background or cultural lens. Moreover, in places that have really strong indigenous and local community presence, as is the case in both Heia and Ketchamak Bay, cultural ecosystem services are also an important way to characterize the environmental conditions that contribute to things like indigenous aesthetic, spiritual, and recreational experiences, sense of place, way of life. Um, and, and in, in Hawaii in particular, cultural ecosystem services can shed light on the many ways that place-based communities interact with their surroundings to really derive all forms of sustenance and well-being. With all of that in mind, our project uses an interdisciplinary and mixed methods approach focused around a few different entry points. And the first of which is a metasynthesis um, intended to strengthen the conceptual foundation for CES work in the two reserves across the NEARS network and beyond. And this metasynthesis is gonna be a technical report of CES, CES methods and metrics. How do you even identify these things? What do they look like? How are people using them? Um, moving into the practical application side of it, our work really heavily focused on site based focuses on site-based convenings uh, via in-person gatherings, which is one of the reasons why the extension was so critical to us. We have um, envisioned a series of reserve and staff partner workshops and focus groups to pilot some of the methods that are um, identified through the meta-analysis, in particular, the participatory methods that are identified there, because in-person gatherings and participatory experience are a preferred form of communication in both reserves. Um, we have also planned a cross-reserve exchange, again, in person to be able to share lessons learned um, and perhaps collective solutions on how we can identify and implement CES more readily in reserve management actions. Finally, there throughout the project, really, we have a really strong emphasis on co-design, co-produced deliverables to meet diverse end user needs. Again, the survey that I dropped in the chat and mentioned earlier, um, is really oriented around creating that conceptual foundation that may make CES more ac uh, accessible, usable across the NEARS network. Uh, we're also coming up with conceptual models of CES for each reserve based on our workshop and for focus groups. Uh, the site-based pilots are intended to provide a strong frame of reference to evaluate and assess some of these participatory methods that we may be coming across. How do they work in practice? What do they feel like? What do they take to use? Um, and another really cool output that I'll share here is that we've built into a pro our project a community-centered artistic output, in particular a painted mural that's going to engage uh, various staff from the Heia Reserve, as well as community partners and hopefully their families when it's safe and comfortable to get together in person for something like that. In terms of today's workshop, um, 
I wanted to start, share some important ways that we envision enabling and supporting meaningful end user engagement in our project. And first, that's through creating a space for relationship building among the reserve staff and their community partners. Um, we're happy to be able to facilitate that connection as researchers who work on this topic and who have previous experience with these reserves, but also it really important for that in-person relationship process to occur on their own timelines in their own ways. Um, we were also able to and grateful to Catalyst for the opportunity to allocate direct support for, for community partners in this project, which is sometimes a challenge for other research grants um, to be able to include that type of support and really clearly uh, direct funding in that way. In terms of our outputs for diverse audiences, I mentioned earlier some of the different entry points we're thinking about. Uh, one important way we were able to progress uh, to work toward those entry points is via subcontracts to groups like the National Estuarine Research Reserve Association to help us coordinate that network-wide um, impact and outreach, and also via Native Hawaiian artists to work on that community-centered artistic output. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's any additional explanation needed on why it's important to engage uh, different multimedia folks or local practitioners artisans of a place to advance project outputs. And with that, I'll close by thanking you all for your time. Here is my contact information if you need me, also our project page 